Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ray Young. I'm a first year PhD student in University of New South Wales. Uh, actually, this is my master's thesis work under the supervision of uh, Professor Flora Salim and Dr. Hao Xue. Uh, my paper's name is SSTKG, Simple Spatial Temporal Knowledge Graph for Interpretable and Versatile Dynamic Information Embedding. Uh, so the first part is the introduction. So uh, what is a knowledge graph? It's fundamentally a direct graph designed to represent knowledge in a structured form. Uh, at its core, the KG compromise entities represent as node and the relationship between them, which depict as edges, and it may process attributes that further describe them. Uh, facts, the knowledge node uh, structure is how KG store and represent knowledge. So here is an example of knowledge graph and that is clearly a DaVinci paid in Mona Lisa. This is a clear fact. But let's move on. Look to another knowledge graph. There are the four stores and two locations. They are listed simulating how store sellings are affecting with each other. Uh, while you can see that McDonald's and Burger King compete with each other and time one, well, this relationship may evolve over time and low, low location. You can see that, that time two, the relationship between the different entities may change. Uh, so, oh. so this knowledge graph is actually a spatial temporal one, but uh, there's actually some challenges with the spatial temporal knowledge graph. The first one is the name of time and locations. In a spatial temporal data, time and location is recorded very precisely, which is handling the huge amount of this data poses a very major challenge in terms of data management and uh, processing efficiency. And uh, the second one is entity categories. To precisely categorize data in some data sets, uh, in the ICS code is used, which is six digit. But every digit has different meanings. So should we categorize entity type in such details granularity? And uh, better, there's a trade-off between details and uh, usability. And uh, the third one is the relationship between entities, as I said. The relationship and attributes of the entities are constantly evolving. Factors that uh, status of the source, they are fluid and require frequent updates to the graph. Uh, and uh, at last, most knowledge graphs, they're highly specialized, focusing on specific domains. This specific, uh, this, uh, specialization makes the knowledge alignment across different domains very challenging. Uh, so now I'll introduce the methodology part. So let's look back to our spatial temporal knowledge graph methodology. To define problem, we aim to build an optimal spatial temporal knowledge graph, which should at first accommodate in the dynamic nature of the data and also facilitating the complete completion and enhancement of the KG after the in initial construction. And also we need a spatial temporal knowledge graph to be able to predict the first coming attributes of the relationship. So specifically to solve the problem, we raised a framework, a simple spatial temporal knowledge graph, which is SSDKG. Uh, here is the framework. We first put raw data, in, including time and location. We pre-process into structured one. Then a raw knowledge graph is established and set into training. And in the training, uh, we used the like, three-step embedding, which I will induce later. And at last, embedding will be used to for downstream tasks. In our case, it is a prediction. Uh, so <clears throat> here is some uh, rules for our simple spatial temporal knowledge graph. Uh, for the knowledge graph construction, in our framework, the spatial temporal records are first thing as attributes. Uh, then we treat the two specialized categories as part of the entity embeddings, not uh, separately listed. Also in our framework, the dynamic relationship is seen as uh, influence. It's representing how one entity makes effect uh, on, each, on the other, which is changing over time. And uh, finally, to limit the number of relation uh, or to easy the computation, we set some threshold for pruning. In my experience, it's descents and records. Uh, so here is the... Uh, here for uh, our framework, the spatial temporal knowledge graph embeddings, there are three parts of the embeddings. The first one is the static one. The second one is the dynamic out embedding and the third one is dynamic in embedding. And I'll just introduce it one by one. 
So for the static embedding, it's uh, unchanged all time and seen as ground truth. For example, the entity's overall record. And uh, the second is the dynamic out embedding, which represents uh, at time t how professor uh, how how potential influence an entity may uh, be applied to its linked entities. And the third one is dynamic in embeddings, which is influence that an entity received from its uh, associate entities. So at last, for the for one simple spatial uh, uh, temporal boundary graph, uh, we we have between different entities, a uh, unique directional influence can be represented. Uh, so the SSHTKG actually it has some properties. The first is uh, its uh, influence patterns. In training process, we first get a static, then out embedding, the in embedding. And uh, the process is reversed when doing inference. And the, actually the prediction value uh, is first content, uh, containing an entity's future in embedding, then decoded to out embedding and then temporal records. And the second property of the uh, SSKG is its uh, interpretability. The whole feeding and the uh, training process to simply expand is a process of like uh, finding proper embedding that incorporate an entity's records, such, such as an uh, entity A's in embedding is viewed as the result of the combined effects of A's related entities, which is out embedding. Uh, during which the unidirectional relation between two entities can be calculated. And uh, we set some experiments. Uh, SSKG is applied on the following data site. First one is uh, Spend Ohio by Safe Graph, uh, <clears throat> which contains Ohio stores geographical and categorical information. And uh, it contains the selling records they counted by day. And the second one is the traffic volume of transport for New South Wales, which is TFNSW data sets. It's a collection of the permanent, uh, permanent traffic counters and classifiers in Sydney. It's counted on an uh, hourly basis. Our task is uh, the regular re prediction. It's like selling and uh, traffic volume. Uh, so here is a comparison of models. Uh, we compare our model with SVR, LSTM, GRU, TGCN, and uh, SGGCN. Uh, actually, TGCN, SGGCN, and our model capture both temporal and uh, spatial characteristics. I use the accuracy uh, and uh, the uh, rooted mean square and relative standard deviation as a uh, evaluation metrics. Uh, so we can see that uh, SSKG outperforms those uh, old models that only consent, uh, consider temporal attributes. And it's also better than TGCN. For SGGCN, although SSKG is not completely outperforms, but in most metrics it's similar or better. Uh, also to verify the interpretability, I said I case study which is based on the Spend Ohio data set. We choose one entity, which is a full type restaurant. It's selected because it's a complete, uh, it has complete record every day. And it's in a general category, which is restaurant. It's not unlike some specialized categories like, like uh, golf courses or country clubs or something else. So uh, according to the set threshold, there are like uh, uh, 41 stores in in nearby area, but at last there are only 39 related stores linked on the on our established node graph. So on the left, the, the uh, x axis is uh, on the left figure, the x axis represents the distance between related entities and the center one, and the y axis represents the number of entities following the distance range. And the figure on the right shows the influence values. Uh, that are calculated and extracted from the SSHT KG. Uh, notably, y-axis represent the calculated influence in SSHT KG for every linked entity. Uh, mm. uh, here, oh. here we choose like three groups of entity like A, B, and C for further uh, for further experiment. Uh, for the three group of entities. Uh, their mask and excluding from prediction. And uh, if they are mask and re-round re the prediction, the predict result will change. Uh, this above two table shows the change of prediction after maximum. We expect that since 
like entity A has a positive influence after masking A, the predicted result will be smaller. While on the, other hand, uh, on the other hand, the predicted result after masking B will be larger. For the three entities in group C, since the small influence value makes very small impact on the prediction, we expect the result changes just a little bit. Uh, actually, the mean value verifies the assumption, and we further hypothesis or we further run a hypothesis t test with no hypothesis opposite than what we expect. So actually, from the hypothesis test, uh, the results uh, of the p value are over, uh, sufficiently large enough to reject the no hypothesis and accept our assumptions, which shows that the influence on SSKG indeed have the impact on prediction as explained. Okay, that's, uh, so from the very concern, we can see that entity A, which has a positive influence, it leads to a positive increase on center entity selling, while entity B, which has a negative influence, leads to the center entity's selling record after prediction for a negatively decrease, while group C entities make some no influence. Okay, uh, that's all for my presentation. Thanks for listening.